<laughs> Together with the words Calvary's Court, the students shall then be able to learn from the ancient necromancers. No doubt, the great hero of all the lands of the Moro Morians. Uh, no, it's, I haven't read this one. Uh, Morians did in the title immortal as he still walks at the right hand of the Mountain King. Dead in body but not in spirit, Morian's legacy of greatness and heroism will live on to Jesus into eternity. Many young children have not yet learned of Morian's true wonderment, often, do often look up with innocent upturned eyes and ask with voices filled with awe of the great man which they have heard the playmates speak. Then do the parents sit down with their children and tell them the story of the greatest of all magic users, the first necromancer. Orange greatness became obvious when he was still but a young boy. At the age of seven he slew a troll. They threatened his father, although the troll was terrible and large and armed with a deadly club. Orange stood unafraid. The blessed child Orange stood with sharp stone in hand and held the stone with a very great force. The stone struck the troll in the eye and landed with such force that the troll would fall dead. Morian's father was saved. Great feats of Morian's did not end with his victory over the troll. When Morian's was just beginning to grow into manhood, a strange man did come to his village. The stranger did speak well and claimed to be a prophet. Many people did come to hear this man speak, for he did offer salvation to those who would follow him. Morian's, in his great wisdom, did see the man was shattered and rebuked him. When the others heard Morian's, they too saw that the man was a false prophet and did stone him to death. Such was the greatness of Morian's that the great story of Morian's greatness. The greatest story of Morian's greatness is how great it was, because he was just great. It's the story of the pact which Morian's made with the Mountain King. Great, great, so great is the power of the Earth Titan. Terribly did he shake the ground. For unbeknownst to mortal man, the Mountain King did have great hunger for human flesh. Therefore, Lithos would tear up the land and would spill his victims. Morian's knew Lithos' longing, for Morian's was wiser than any other. Without fear, Morian's did tread beneath the ground, find the Mountain King and the City of the Dead, did confront. The great and mighty Mountain King. Oh, fuck me. Lithos shook the ground. Morian's still in for aid. Lithos asked why Morian should come before a Titan. Morian told Lithos he knew the Titan's hunger. Therefore, did Morian offer a bargain which the Mountain King. Should Lithos spare the people above the ground, let them live to old age, Morian would ensure that upon death all the remains would be offered to, to Lithos. This bargain should be kept, promised Morians. The almighty Titan would have his fill, and the people of the ground could then live unafraid. Lithos, being most impressed with this fearless mortal which stood before him, did agree that such a bargain would be a good thing. Then did Morians promise that he personally would inter all the dead, giving over their bodies to Lithos. So impressed by Morians' courage, which was great, and self sacrifice, that it was Lithos that he did give his necromancer his greatest prize, the heart of the earth. This treasure, which is the largest diamond shaped object in the world, Made of pure, lovely black rock. Ah. So rare is this black rock, there are only five pieces in the entire world. And so proud was Morians of his treasure, did vow never to give it up, but to carry the heart of the earth into the city of the dead and hold it for eternity. Countless small stories of Morians' greatness and power, truly too many for this tone to contain. But to all any more would Morians' glory be immodest and unworthy of such an old man. This ends the incomplete life story of Morians, necromancer, prophet, hero, surrounded by my hand in the great tomb. Completely the time of Bloodwatch, Morian's necromancer. He wrote it himself. So, I better have a bag of reagents, hadn't I? Because it looks like I'm going to need it. Why can't you just drop them into the bag? Wood, dirt, blood, bone shards. And we've got here that black maw. So I bet Executioner's Cap is a reagent. I found before.
Voices of Mary. Yeah, we know that one. Stories to make children sleep by Brother Grimm. What the fish tell me? The fish tell me by Calandra. Well, the fish tell me all sorts of things like when there's sun and when there's rain. They're so nice and very smart and bubbles come up when they fart. <laughs> Well, the fish tell me all sorts of things. I like to listen to them sing. They sing of life beneath the sea, but never mention if they pee. Well, the fish tell me all sorts of things, like where they are and where they've been. I guess it all just goes to prove you can have your friends and eat them too. That's brilliant. I'm going to teach that to Veris. Deserves a screenshot. Not Morians, not Morians. Rolling sphere. My time of this ground draws nigh. My dearest lord, the Mountain King, calls me, and I must go. Soon I shall shed this mortal coil and join Lithos for life everlasting. Yet before I go, I must fill my final charge as necromancer. My final duty is this: my spell, the spell which will be my addition to the magic of the earth and power. May Lithos be praised for time immortal. Students of the power of earth shall this spell learn. From my dead lips shall they hear how to coax the Lord of the Earth to shake his almighty body and make all fall before the user of Earth and magic. To call quakes, combine the sacred reagents of bone, wood, dirt, and blackmore. Invoke the power of magic on these reagents when encloses in a bag, and you will be enabled to call the power of Lithos. This is my final act as necromancer. I await the call of the Mountain King, Lothian Necromancer. Hello? Hello? Don't want to talk to me. Thought there might be a teleport thing. The buildings that might have a teleport thing, because that'd be really useful. Now, oh, Martin family mausoleum, do not disturb. Hello, I'm here to disturb you. It's not much of a fucking mausoleum, just chuck them in, pile them on. to do oh fuck you're gonna cast spells oh are you Man. I'm gonna die. Nice. It's also nice you didn't die. Red is a 
more powerful heal. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Oh, what's in here? Still no teleporter. Hello, log. Sadly fair. Run. like loads of zombies and the ghost. Might be a teleporter from here back to town. Ow. Oh, fuck. Find the gate again now. Three points. Wee, wee. There's the gate. So I need to go back and go to the palace. So I thought I said it was east, but it's more like north.
Home base. Ah, go away. Ah, go away. So, where, where's the thanks I get? Mm. And the road goes this way as well. Hmm. It just stops going this way. Okay then. That rolls. Ow. Uh, they just sort of fell over and died. equipment and clothing. Okay, uh, castle in the middle. Use. It's not that dagger. To the room, but I can't get to the woman. Ah, but she's. Now, oh, I wonder if I have to talk to the handmaiden. Oing! Still don't know where she lives, though. Time it is, that's the problem. She's at home at Blood Watch. Can you tell me the time? What's your duty? I ask you. It must be about my duties, which I'm not going to tell you about. I'm going to steal your clock. First ebb. Now I can't actually remember how the time works. It was in the book of the 
guards, wasn't it? There we go. For, oh, bollocks, we just missed it. So, let's make a note of these. Okay, so the only way to progress time of day is to sleep, I think. Oops. Stop it. We're in first episode. I need to sleep four. Four what, cycles, was it? I think the wooden house is the one I want because the door's locked. So if I sleep for four, that's either going to put me on even tide or blood watch, depending on what. If even tide, so I need to sleep for one more. At least I have to worry about bloody food. Open. It's still bloody locked. But it's blood watch. It's not something stupid like you've got to come out of the area, is it? Because no, I slept outside, it's not going to pick up. Blood watch, right? It is great, so we'll refresh the area. You there? I may serve you, stranger. My what you called? My name is Aramnia. What do you do here? Merely a servant. Tell me about the palace. It's the home of our Tempest Lady Mother. Well, it's not good for me to speak her employer behind her back, but I'll tell you she's a hard woman. Why do you say she's hard? She'll stop at nothing to preserve her power here. Nothing, even murder. She hardly noticed my existence. At least she does not take pleasure in tormenting me like her Seneschal does. The power of the Tempest Dream Lord, the power of control the weather, it's indeed great power. Mother. Did I say murder? Oh no, I meant nothing like that. I meant. Mother, that's what I said. Mother. She's like a mother to her people. Mm. Salkind is a seneschal. Tell me of Salkind. Sets me to different tasks and delights in tormenting me until I'm barely able to complete them. What difficult tasks does it give you? No, no, certainly not difficult. Rather challenging that it gives me challenging tasks. For instance, he will give me a very small brush and tell me to clean the floor of his room. Then he will arrive, his boots muddy from his walks along the shore and track mud all over the floor I just cleaned. Then points the dirt out to me and chastises me for poor work, calling me no good slackered. Perhaps Tom, it's too strong word. Actually, he's quite the joker. For instance, just today he was walking down the hall towards me when he suddenly cornered me and began to pinch and grab my body. Don't you think that's funny? No. No, really? Truly, I didn't find it humorous either, but he finds it hilarious. So I smile and try my best to stay out of his way. It's precious look I could do. Slap him. No, my friend, I have no desire to lose my job, nor my head, for the strike the seneschal will be considered treason. we will be beheaded before the next morning. Well, I must get back to it now. No! Have you met Devon? Devon, well, I know him, but I've never actually met him, but I think I'd like to. You'd like to meet him? Once when I sent to store to purchase something for Lady Maldi, he was there. I thought he had the nicest smile. Seeing him, and I know his name, I rarely get to meet anyone. I know Devon. You do? Oh, is he as nice as he looks? He's such a nice smile in his eyes. They're blue, aren't they? I really think he's handsome. Do you think that you might mention me to him the next time you see him? I'm um, yes. Of course I will. Now give me the now betray the queen. <laughs> Looking for a dagger. A dagger? I know nothing of daggers, I'm just a servant. Are you certain? Yeah, but I don't want to get any trouble, Lord. Please don't ask me to anything that might cause me to anger the lady. You won't get into trouble. Oh, I don't know why, but I'm going to trust you. My dear keeps a special dagger in the locked chest. You'll find the chest in a small closet in her bed. 
It's in the chest. Yes, and I have the key, but let's give you the key. You must promise you not to tell anyone where you got it. I promise. Very well, here it is. Do what you do with it. Do what you wish with it, but remember you did not get that key from me. Need help. Not surprised. Uh, others are in need of help. Not due to lady my dear, my you. I'm certain anyone out there suffers this hungry state due to their own laziness. Yeah. Uh, I know Devon, blah blah blah. Of course I will. Right. Gemstone necklace. It's just regular jewellery, I think. Why is this open? Don't close it, I'm going out. Thank you. Oof. 